טעות. Okay. Let's just give one or two minutes more for the attendees to join. We have 17 attendees as of now. Okay, 20, so I guess we can start. Good evening, Sofia University. My name is Ina Velcheva and I'm a finance manager at uh, VMware Bulgaria. As an alumni of this faculty, I'm extremely happy to be on the fourth mutual event between uh, VMware Bulgaria and FIBA. Tonight, you have the opportunity to take a glimpse uh, into the finance at VMware thanks to our guest speakers, Jeff Page and Pasent Hamdi. Pasent has been with the company for more than eight years and is our senior finance director uh, for the renewals and cloud businesses. Uh, Jeff Page is uh, VP of sales finance for our Americas and the global sales organizations. Tonight, they will be talking about the structure of the finance organization at VMware, their career paths, the challenges they face in their everyday work, and also answering some of the questions that you have pre-submitted. If you still have questions for them uh, or anything for VMware, you can use the Q&A option at the bottom of this webinar and we'll try to answer all of the questions at the end of the session. Before I hand it over to my dear colleague, Stanimira Georgieva, who will be our host tonight, uh, let's take a quick poll about your dream job. Oh, there is competition. Oh, no. Are we allowed to vote as well? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say I have no idea. <laughs> wow, financial analyst is up there. Nobody wants to be an accountant <laughs> and an auditor. Or a sales rep. <laughs> a 
Okay, I believe 17 out of 21 people voted, so we can close the, the poll now. And we have a winner, it's the finance analyst, followed by a data analyst, and then none of the above, which is okay, you know, you'll find out, don't worry. <laughs> Um, so strange yeah. that we don't have any accountants and auditors here. Yeah. Well, um, you will be finding out more about the finance structure at VMware today. So hopefully uh, that can help you a bit with your uh, answer to this question. So thank you, Ina, so much for the introduction and um, welcome to everybody on the line. Uh, my name is Tanimira. Um, I am part of uh, the VMware finance team. And I will be hosting the talk today with Pesant and Jeff, who have gladly agreed to be part of it. So thank you, Jeff and Pesant, for being here. Um, I am part of Pesant's team, actually, so we know each other very well. And um, we will start by asking uh, both Jeff and Pesant to tell us a bit about themselves and then also their career journeys and their dream jobs. So Jeff, I'll hand it to, over to you first. Thanks, Mira. Uh, interesting poll. I think if I would have answered that question, it would have been none of the above. I wanted to be a rock star, but uh, I could neither sing nor play an instrument. So here I am. I became an accountant. Uh, so it was a little bit of a, a different, uh, different approach. So just a little bit about me. I've, uh, you know, I've been in, uh, in, in California for a long time. I was born in Michigan, the, the Great Lakes Lake State. I went to Indiana University for my undergraduate degree. I went, in, went to Indiana because I wanted to be a business major. I knew that pretty early on uh, and I was good with numbers. So finance and accounting kind of fit uh, my, uh, my desires and my passion. Uh, I ended up becoming an accounting major. I got my CPA uh, early on in my career, uh, but have never been in an accounting job. And so uh, it's been uh, it's been a skill that has has served me well across my mostly finance uh, experience. Uh, I did start my career at Arthur Anderson, which uh, probably everyone knows is no longer uh, here. H had nothing to do with me. It didn't uh, collapse because of anything I did. Fortunately, I uh, spent uh, five years there, uh, where I start ended up as a consultant. My last consulting job there was uh, helping a telecommunications company uh, bring up their service. And from there, I really got hooked into the, the telco uh, kind of in, uh, the telco industry. And because of that, ended up getting a job at Ericsson. My wife and I, well, my girlfriend at that time, my wife and I decided to uh, start our lives together uh, when we got married and moved to, uh, new, moved to North Carolina. Uh, I did spend uh, six years there where I was at Ericsson and then uh, ultimately Sony Ericsson when Sony and Ericsson decided to put their mobile phones groups together. Uh, learned a ton there in terms of sales finance. Uh, had a pretty small team, but was supporting, uh, supporting America's uh, sales organization. I was fortunate to have uh, the opportunity to get my MBA when I was uh, at Ericsson. Uh, they supported, uh, supported me fully. So I got my MBA at the uh, University of uh, North Carolina in, in Chapel Hill. Great experience. Uh, you know, I, I think we've got mostly undergrads uh, on today, but uh, you know, if you have an opportunity to, uh, to expand, it's, uh, as some people say, it's accelerated learning. Uh, it's equivalent, uh, some say, to 10 years of experience, but it was, a, it was a great experience for me. I then somehow was able to convince my wife and then family, it was only my daughter, that we, it would be a good idea to move to California to, uh, to join a startup. Had I known then what I knew, know now, I probably wouldn't have made the same decision, but uh, I spent 12 years at three different startups uh, and I had varying success. You know, the original plan was to, to go out, make a lot of money, and then come back to North Carolina and, and buy a big house. Uh, I've now been in California for uh, 17 years, and I'll probably make the most money on my house that I bought in California. Um, I've been at VMware now for, uh, for three and a half uh, years. Uh, I'm supporting the Americas sales organization. 
uh, that is uh, the largest of the, the three geos across, uh, across VMware. I, I also support our global accounts business, which is a uh, selection of, uh, of roughly 100 accounts worldwide that uh, we, we give white glove treatment and, uh, and they're, they're buying a lot from us. I do have, uh, as I said, I'm married. I've got three kids. Uh, my oldest daughter, uh, like many of you, uh, will be starting school in, uh, in August. Hopefully we'll be starting school given, uh, given our current situation. And uh, I've got a daughter that starts in high school next year and then my son is in middle school. So I, I think one of the things that I, I did want to convey is you know, th this situation that we're in with COVID-19 I've been in the business world for 30 years now. I've never seen anything like it where the whole world shuts down. So, you know, what we're doing to, uh, to slow down the, uh, the, uh, the, the disease is, uh, is really in, important. Uh, you know, we've been working at home at VMware for five, five weeks now. Probably we'll, we'll extend through at least mid, mid May in most areas, but uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's making an impact. So uh, I hope all is, all, all is well with everyone there. Uh, Pacent, I'll uh, turn it over to you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. And thank you, Sophia University, for attending. Good evening. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Thank you. All right. So I have not been in as many places as Jeff, but I do have one green line. I was born in Canada. Um, left when I was three. Yeah, I'm still a Canadian citizen, but I've been in Bay Area my entire life after that. Um, I also knew very early, actually in high school, that numbers and math were my thing. I uh, was not very strong in English, did not like reading, so that kind of was my calling. So went to Santa Clara University. Um, I was a finance major, so I've been finance my entire career, um, so it's near and dear to my heart. Um, there's a little picture next to it. Um, it's us actually dropping off my son this year. Um, he just started at Santa Clara University. Um, so hopefully you guys will have some pictures next year of, you know, dorming and as environment hopefully gets better. So, you know, going and, you know, graduating from Santa Clara and thinking about wh what I wanted to do. I really, I really didn't know where I wanted to work. So, you know, if I had taken that poll, I knew I was in finance, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. There's many opportunities. And so what I did know, though, is what I didn't want to do. So I did take some advantage of doing internships while I was in college. So I would definitely uh, recommend internships because it gives you an idea of what you like or what you don't like or where your passion is. Um, I originally thought I wanted to go into investment banking. And so I did have an internship. Um, at one of the big firms and I was super excited, but I quickly learned that wasn't the culture for me. Um, you know, we weren't treated very well. Obviously this is 20 years ago, so things have definitely changed. So nothing against the firm, but um, at least my situation, we weren't treated well. Um, I think parking was like $300 a month and they wouldn't uh, pay for it. Uh, they brought lunches. They asked us to wait until every, all the partners ate and we could have the leftovers. So, it wasn't a very good experience for me. So I quickly knew that, you know, I didn't want to go into that field and I wanted to go into corporate finance. And so when I was interviewing right out of college, what I was really looking for was culture. I mean, culture is extremely, at least for me personally, very important. Um, and why I chose Agilent is because it was the team and it was the opportunities, it was the manager um, and, you know, I actually, in Santa Clara, when I was a finance major, tried to avoid accounting classes at all costs. Um, it just, it wasn't my thing, yet my first job, um, which is surprising, was in lease accounting. And I literally had to learn FASB 13, which I didn't even know, you know, what, what FASB was. Um, but it gave me a really good foundation for all of my finance jobs after that. Um, so very similar to Jeff, you know, even though he didn't do accounting, having an accounting baseline and understanding um, how the P&L and balance sheet work gives you a really good foundation to be able to support your partners in fp &A. So anyways, Agilent is a semiconductor company. Um, the semiconductor industry has been consolidating for the past, you know, 20 years. Um, I got spun off to a company called Vergy. 
Vergie then got bought out by Vanta. So I quickly then decided after about 10 years in being semiconductor that I wanted to move into software. Um, there was too much, uh, you know, turbulence and unknowns and, you know, a lot of pressure on margins and P&L. So kind of wanted to go more into a growing industry. And that's how I actually chose VMware. Uh, VMware 10 years ago, you know, was growing exponentially. I've been there for eight years. Uh, if you see, there's a picture of Cube. So there's a tradition that every four years um, they celebrate your, you know, your tenure by giving you these cubes. And I'm very proud of them. I wanted to share that with you guys uh, today and I have them on my desk. So that's a little bit about my career, how I, you know, how I got to where I am. Um, on a personal side, if you look to the right, you'll see some pictures of my family. Uh, we like to travel, so we recently went to Egypt um, and visited the pyramids, and that's my son and my daughter. Um, that's about two years ago. And then at the bottom, you'll see my, my husband. We've been married for 20 years. And then our new addition, we adopted a little, uh, little puppy. The puppy timing was perfect. We did not know we were going into this uh, COVID-19 situation of self-sheltering, but the timing worked out great. Um, so Maple is as happy as can be. She's the happiest in the house because we're all here and we're training her and, it, you know, it's been good. Back to you, Mira. Thank you. Thank you both, uh, Jeff and Pasen. This was a great introduction and it was super interesting to hear about your career journey and how you ended up working in sales finance and you know sales finance at VMware. Um, so sales finance is a division of in the larger finance organization. Jeff, would you mind sharing um, more about the finance structure at our company? Yeah, I, I would, and I think that you know as I look back when I started, uh, you know even when I was in, in college, you know what finance to me meant accounting. Um, and what I've learned over the years is it, it's, it's much different than that. Um, our, our CFO is uh, Zane Rowe. Uh, Zane joined, uh, joined VMware in 2016. Uh, he is, uh, he's, a, he's a great leader for us. Uh, I think that uh, he has uh, got a ton of respect in, in the company and also uh, probably more importantly outside of the uh, company. We have over 2,000 uh, finance professionals around the world. We have uh, major sites in, uh, in California at Palo Alto, which is our corporate office. We have a big site there in Sofia. Um, we have a site in Costa Rica, and we have a big site in, uh, in India. We have other uh, areas around uh, the world to support the various, uh, various, various functions, but those are kind of the biggest uh, biggest ones. When you look at Zane's organization, uh, we thought, you know, thinking about, you know, your, where you are in your, uh, your education, uh, grouping them into, you know, your typical uh, backgrounds that you'll see in each of these areas. So you think of a more accounting uh, backgrounds, you think of finance backgrounds, and then you, you have other, other functions here. That being said, you know, I am in sales finance. As I said, I have a, an accounting degree. I, I, I passed my CPA a long, long time ago, uh, but I don't do any accounting. And I could, that is just not where I have, uh, have passion. Um, our accounting group, though, is strong and good. Um, we, we, you know, the accounting group is responsible for all of the, the public reported financials. Uh, you know, the big ones are our quarter, quarterly re leases and uh, annual, uh, annual release. Uh, you know, we, are, uh, we are nearing our quarter end. Our quarter end is next week. So uh, there'll be a ton of activity uh, with the accounting team uh, you know, within the next, uh, next couple of weeks. Our tax team, you know, they're, they are not only doing uh, statutory tax returns, which are required all over the world, but also setting up tax stra strategy and corporate structure. Uh, as probably many of you know, you know, having that corporate structure set right can be a very advantageous from a um, from a tax perspective, um, and that's a, a critical piece to the uh, the overall finance structure of the organization. Our treasury uh, team, you know, they are managing our cash, and and when you have a worldwide organization, you have to deal in different currencies. So you have to make sure that you're, uh, you have the right currencies in the right place to pay people and pay for things. 
but you also have to make sure that you're you're executing our uh, overall uh, strategy. That you know, you, maybe we we just issued some debt uh, within the last three weeks or so uh, to to uh, some, put some more cash on our balance sheet. We have uh, you know we we are executing on a share buyback program that uh, that we've uh, been participating in for the last couple of years. Uh, so it's it's. It's all about the the capital uh, and and where they need to uh, manage that. Our internal audit function is um, both kind of an extension of the audit, uh, the external audit, but also is reviewing processes across the organization, looking for areas that they can bring in a independent view on the way we're doing uh, doing th things and make recommendations to uh, to leadership. Functions that are more finance, that fit more to folks with finance backgrounds are, are, are these four. You know, number one is investor relations. And investor relations is all of the outbound communication to the, uh, to the investor community. They, they do a ton of work to, uh, to make sure that, you know, all of our results are, uh, are well, well uh, understood and communicated, you know, the, the key uh, activities there are our quarterly uh, earnings uh, release. We'll be we'll be releasing earnings at the end of uh, near the end of the May end of May. So if you're interested, uh, I would suggest uh, either calling in or listening to the recording of our, uh, our results. Our sales finance function, where both Pacent and I are uh, are our leaders, uh, you know, are supporting the sales organization. And uh, the sales organization is driving those uh, those big, large sales, small sales to uh, to the customers across the world. And we are uh, we are responsible for for not only making sure that we're doing what we forecast, um, but also making sure that we're doing deals that are good for the company. So thinking about you know discounts, thinking about structure, uh, you know if if we're selling. Uh, uh, software licenses or we're selling services. Uh, those are areas that we have to look at, but also then looking at the resources needed to, uh, to support the sales organization. So we have a lot of salespeople and we look at, you know, their, how they're productive, you know, are, how much sales per head are they generating? How, uh, how fast can they get up to speed? Uh, and we're helping the the organization make those uh, investment decisions to decide when we need to add salespeople or wh wh when we need to remove salespeople. Our business unit finance is supporting mostly our R and D function. So our our R and D our business units are split by product, and so they are again looking at the at the product level results, how much of various products we're selling but also the costs that we're incurring to develop the products and making sure that we're getting good return on the, uh, on the uh, research and development that we're, uh, we're, we're doing. And then finally, the, the finance and strategy, strategy and ops uh, team, they're looking at how we are using capital. You know, th and this is, this is pretty wide range. This, this could include, um, you know, are we doing share buybacks? Are we uh, set to acquire companies, um, which we've done in the last couple years? Um, are we uh, are we looking at building out new locations? Uh, uh, are we uh, are we looking at uh, at uh, spending more on you know internal development or in, in investing in sales? So it's it's a it's how we're using the 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 capital. And it's a big determinant on the valuation of, uh, of, our, of our company. Then you've got a couple of other various uh, functions. You've got corporate development. Corporate development, you know, this team is out looking at mergers and acquisitions. You know, th th they're, they, are, they are looking to see if it's more efficient uh, for us to buy a technology or company versus develop it in-house. And again, we've had a lot of activity uh, in the last couple of years where we've acquired some big companies. And then finally, and this, this is something that affects the whole company, you know, the data analytics team. Um, they are looking at our overall data structure, um, how 
we need different pieces of information to run the, the business more effectively and making sure that we've got it in a consistent, uh, a consistent manner. You know, a lot of the things that we're doing uh, require us to think about our business differently um, and they're helping us uh, use our data to, uh, to drive those, uh, those decisions. So that's just an overview of, of, uh, of VMware's finance structure. Uh, Mira, I hope that, uh, that, that answered the question. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeff. I, I do believe this is very useful information. And when I was a student, uh, I was always interested in knowing more about the finance departments and various enterprises and how they work. So thanks for all that background. I think it was really, really helpful. Um, turning it over to Pasen, Pasen, can you share how you and your Sophia team uh, fit into the finance structure at VMware that Jeff just told us about? Yeah, absolutely, Mira. Thank you. So as Jeff mentioned, um, we're both leaders in sales finance. Um, I've been in sales finance probably the majority of my career. I'd have to say maybe eight or 10 years out of my 20 years. Um, you know, something that I, I didn't mention before, but you know, through my career, I, I did take jobs in all of the PL line items, right? So I've um, supported cost of goods sold, I've supported marketing, I've supported SGNA, um, I've done central functions, I've done corporate development functions, and uh, sales finance is where my passion is. Um, you know, as Jeff was mentioning, end of the quarter is coming. I like the speed of it. I like the top line support. I like working on deals, um, try to get our best ROI. And I do that with our team. So we have a team both based in Palo Alto and we have a team based in Sofia. So as Mira mentioned, she's on my team. She's a leader in Sofia who manages that team. Um, and we're really one team. Um, that's how we're seen. And the team in Sofia, they're, they're absolutely amazing. Um, they are very much partner facing. They are doing a lot of the heavy lifting hand in hand with our partners in our sales organization, you know, optimizing their P&L, looking for efficiencies, looking to support them in strategy and in initiatives, um, whatever that, that may be. Um, and, you know, they're seen as very, very valuable and we depend on the team extremely. Um, Mira, how about you comment on, you know, what your experience has been in the last few years managing the team in Sofia? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Pasant, and happy to share my point of view as well. Uh, maybe first to give you all some background. Today we have about 50 people in the sales finance department in Sofia at VMware, compared to only two uh, 10 years ago. So that is a, a great growth and We've definitely expanded the team thanks, thanks to the great partnership uh, with our colleagues in the various VMware offices that we work with. So working with Pacent and Jeff's teams and everybody else um, in, in California and across the world. So from a day-to-day -day standpoint, as Pacent said, we do have a very close partnership with all of the business partners that we support and um, we drive a lot of value to the decision-making processes that um, they drive on a daily basis. Uh, I wanted to also give you an example of um, how we like to stay connected as a team. As Pasant mentioned, we're really one team. Um, our team specifically got together in California last week in November for a team building event where we got to talk about priorities and how to work uh, better together. It was a very, very fun time. So um, I'm very, very happy to be part of this team. And um, I think that uh, the work that we do in Sofia in partnership with the Palo Alto team is amazing. So I hope that... Thank you, Pacent. And I hope this helped everybody get an idea of how we work together as a global team. Um, I'm now going to switch to a slightly different subject, which is um, about the challenges, because every um, department, every organization in a certain company faces challenges. And Pacent and Jeff, I was hoping to um, get, get examples from your experience. Maybe Jeff, you can um, share some of your experience so far. Yeah, I, I think that, uh, thanks, thanks, uh, Mira. I, I, you know, the challenge is, is what makes that makes the job interesting. And uh, you know, for me, it is it would be boring if you were if you didn't have uh, 
have some uh, some things that you had to had to work through and uh, and figure out. And we certainly have plenty of them at uh, at uh, at VMware. You know, I think that the first one that you know immediate is just this whole challenge that we have today with the uh, with with COVID nineteen and how it has forced us out of our offices, which you know VMware is lucky to have beautiful offices and great great facilities to, uh, to, to work in, but it's forced us to do things differently. And, you know, we are lucky that, uh, that we have, the company was well set up already for a complete work, remote workforce. Uh, we've, we've had, you know, we've had tools for a long time uh, that allow us to work, uh, work remotely. I mean, Zoom is a great example here that, uh, that uh, we we use Zoom regularly with uh, with my team uh, that is based you know both in 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 Sofia but also around the around the United States and Latin America. Uh, and one of the things I've noticed with with COVID is more use of video, and I think that that is something that has allowed us to connect more, even though we're all remote. Um, you know, we miss those those uh, those face to face meetings or those uh, informal connections we have when we're when we're in the office, which is unfortunate. But we've made up for it with uh, with doing more you know video conferences. Uh, my team now we do a little uh, what we call our uh, Wednesday happy hour where, where we where we all got to get on and uh, just share where we are. And we're not talking about business. We're just uh, you know just connecting with with um, with each other. I think the other area that uh, is important, you know, as we are as we are working remote, we don't have local servers or local data to uh, get to. We've used we've leveraged the the cloud tools, and you know, everything we do is in the cloud, including Salesforce, where we manage opportunities, including including um, we use Microsoft Teams now, where we we share files, share uh, ideas on on projects. Um, and it has allowed us really, I would almost say seamlessly to, uh, to go to this remote, uh, remote uh, environment. It was, it was something that I was very reluctant to do. I was one of the last ones to, you know, come home and work uh, here. I'm working in my daughter's uh, bedroom. Um, so I've, I'm, I'm fortunate she lets me uh, use her bedroom during the day. Uh, but it's, uh, it's really surprised me on how productive you can actually be uh, remote. So I think that's a, a big challenge that we're, we're confronting right now. You know, we're gonna go through our first close, quarter close, uh, completely remote. So that will be another challenge that we'll have to, uh, to ha handle. But I think that, you know, everyone's got a great attitude and we're, we're, we're working through this uh, using some of the tools that were av available to us. Thank you, Jeff. Um, thank you and um, appreciate that uh, you're recognizing the current situation and sharing more how about the team is staying connected. Um, we're also, you know, to share a bit more on our side, we're also doing a weekly sync up with, uh, with our team. And I think these are important in, uh, in times like these. Vicente, what about you? Is there any um, challenge that you want to talk about and how you're tackling it and handling it? Yeah, no, absolutely, Mira. So, you know, as I mentioned before, um, I support our cloud business. Um, so it's really exciting time at VMware. Uh, VMware has historically been a perpetual uh, company, and we are now transforming to include um, SaaS offerings as well. So for those of you who don't know the difference between perpetual versus SaaS, um, think about it. Perpetual basically is... Um, buying something or buying your software outright. So the customer buys, you know, the license and the software and they own it. In a SaaS world, it's different. Um, SaaS is, you know, they're going to pay an X amount of dollars um, per user or per month. Um, and then they can just continue their relationship at any time. So I was trying to think of an analogy, um, you know, to explain it a little bit better. And so think about your car. You can either buy your car or you can rent and lease your car. So when you buy your car, you own it outright. And that's more how we used to do business with our perpetual and selling perpetual software. Now that we're also including our SaaS offering, it's like renting and leasing where 
you know, when you come at the end of your contract, you have to either give it back or you renew it. And that's a lot very similar to um, SaaS. So, you know, with that and with that change, it's a massive change for the company. It affects many, many things. And the way you sell SaaS and the way you uh, engage with your customers is very different. So there's a lot of change management. Um, you know, you have to address what, what's your go-to-market strategy? You know, what's your new margin structure look like? Um, you know, how do you, how do you manage that with your outside investor community? Because it has a very different P and L structure and, you know, introducing that, that does different things in terms of your comp line and how, how do you communicate that and internally, you know, you need systems and you need different metrics and you need different reporting. So it's a massive, massive change, um, that we're going through. And I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot through it, and I've learned a lot in terms of what what's needed to make you know to be successful in in, in these challenges, right? I think one of the most important things um, is that you have your executive support, and we absolutely have 100% executive support. That this is the direction that the company um, is going to go and is going to be supported, and I think that's really important when you're going through a huge, massive change. And then after that, um, you know what we've been doing to. Uh, managed through this change is that we've come up with different work streams and, and um, owners um, and to kind of face different challenges. And what's really important as we're doing this, right, is to stay connected, communicate, have accountability, have deadlines, and at the end, you have to execute, right? You have to do what you say you're going to do. Um, and so, you know, I also wanted to talk about it because this is an example where, you know, when you're a financial analyst, you really need to understand and learn your business to support it. It's not just about crunching numbers and giving out reports. And this is a really good example where, you know, we're going through a huge transformation and finance is in the center helping support, support that and add value um, to the team. So it's really exciting times. I'm um, really excited to see, you know, where the company goes with it. And it's, I'm glad that, you know, we're all part of this uh, transformation. Back to you, Mira. Thank you, Pasant. Thanks for sharing about this uh, major transformation that the company is going through. I hope everybody found it interesting. Um, and with that, we're going to uh, finish with the questions that we had prepared. So, Jeff and Pasant, thank you so much again. I, I really hope this was useful to everybody, very useful to me. Um, and we're going to go into the uh, Q&A that we received in advance of this webinar. But before that, time for another poll. Um, so I know that we got one question as well here um, in the Q&A section. So hoping that the poll one will help you answer um, that one. And the question will be, what, what are the most important skills in your opinion uh, for you to be successful in your career? And after this, we could certainly give our perspective on uh, on uh, on what we think in terms of both finance and VMware. Absolutely, thank you, Jeff. I like that you guys think that no degree is, is good. <laughs> well, I also think it's really interesting that, you know, for, for uh, communication is, is up there and, mm -hmm. you know, in a very technical role as well. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. We have a winner. Okay. So it is communication that uh, most of you think is one of the most important skills, which is um, very good. It's, it's really important. Time management, I think, is the second one. And then we've got uh, technical skills. Oh, sorry, we have critical thinking in the second place. Yep. Yeah. Very good. I think, hey, could we comment on that, uh, Mira, while we're, while yeah. we're here? Of course. So I, I, you know, if, if I think looking at the, the question that came in, I, I think that this is fairly representative, you know, as, as we're looking 
at uh, at hiring different people. And you know, in in Bulgaria, my team is uh, is roughly six or seven. Um, and we've had a high level of success of hiring people and they stay with us and they're, they're successful. I, I think, you know, that those that are successful, one, have good, just basic analytic skills. You know, they understand the numbers. And I think that's kind of table stakes. That's, uh, you know, a, a requirement. But those that differentiate themselves, I think, hit some of these, uh, these key key uh, items here. They can communicate well. I think the other thing that is important, especially ramping up, is the ability to listen and understand the business. And I think that that's something that, you know, like Pacent already said, you can understand the, un the numbers, but to really add that value is understanding the, uh, understanding the business. Um, you know, an example, we do a review every quarter where my team, we have a bunch of standard, you know, tables that we put together with all of the results, but we also have to communicate what the results mean. And, and my team in Bulgaria does a great job of, of looking at different elements of the, of the results and being able to explain why we ended up uh, where we did. Is that, would you, would you agree or disagree? Oh, no, I ab absolutely agree. Um, oh, I think when good. I look at candidates, I, one for one. Yeah. Uh, when, you know, when I, when I look at uh, when I look at candidates, I think the technical skills is your baseline, um, right? What differentiates candidates is really the soft skills. Um, you know, how proactive are they going to be, which I think is extremely important. How flexible are they going to be? Um, how do they de deal with conflict? How do they deal with challenges? How do you communicate when you, you know, which is going to be really important when you have conflicting priorities. So I do think the soft skills and, and the way you kind of um, work through things and work through either challenges or your day to day life is extremely important. That will differentiate you as a candidate. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff and Pacent. Um, I hope this provides um, it sheds more light on the question. So thank you for that question. And if you guys have any more, please don't hesitate to put them in the, um, in the Q and A section of the webinar. Uh, in the meantime, we will move on to another question that was pre-submitted. And, um, that question was about the kind of software that we recommend in the field of, uh, finance. So Ooh, you, want us to, you want us to try to answer that one, Mira? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I, I think that you know various various teams are using uh, different uh, different tools. I mean, we still use Excel a lot. I mean, that's maybe not uh, not that uh, uh, glamorous, but uh, I think even the best organizations are are using you know are you either using tools and are extracting information, but at some level. Um, Unfortunately, I don't think there's a way for a financial analyst to not have Excel uh, installed on their uh, on their laptop. Um, we do use other uh, tools. We use uh, SAP, uh, their uh, their data data uh, tool uh, a lot to consolidate information. We've gotten a lot better over the last two years in terms of of standardizing uh, where we can get the data that we need to. Uh, to, to run our business. Um, and we've also uh, developed uh, good dashboards uh, using, uh, using Tableau. And you know, Tableau is another you know, front end uh, that makes things look really easy that we have, we have folks on the back end that can uh, you know, source information from, uh, from different systems uh, to present to, uh, to leaders in a, a very consumable, uh, consumable manner. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I think another uh, follow-up question that we received very much linked to this one was about the programming languages um, that are used in the field of finance. And maybe I can um, take that one and, and share some of the uh, languages that are, for example, uh, data analytics team uh, is using 
And we're talking here about SQL, Python, R, Tableau, ClickView, and um, SAP. So these are all things that um, a candidate would need, or some of them uh, would need to know if they were to, um, for example, apply for a role in data analytics or um, business intelligence. So I hope that helps. And I will move on to the next question. Jeff, I was hoping that we get your thoughts on it as well. Um, what is the scope of development of machine learning and artificial intelligence in the field of finance? This is a, a pretty good question. Yeah, it, and it is. It's an area that uh, I think we have, a, that's an area of development for VMware. Um, we, have, uh, we have making, we've made some strides I would say outside of sales finance, I think that the accounting function use, uses uh, uh, some bots and some, uh, some AI to, to process some, some basic transactions. I think on the sales finance side, one of the things that uh, there has been some work around is our pipeline. And you know, the pipeline is what opportunities the sales team is is loading, um, you know, outside of maybe the current quarter. Um, so it's a good indicator of uh, of what our results could be in uh, future uh, future periods. And they've they've developed some uh, analytics and some some intelligence around, you know, what the results will be based on the stages of uh, of the pipeline, based on. Uh, uh, the types of products that uh, that the customers could be consuming and have bet have allowed us to get good indicators further out in the year on what the results will be, you know. But I think that this is an area that uh, you know, with the right people, with the right skills, we could make a huge uh, huge impact on uh, on 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 VMware. This is an area that we certainly. Uh, could, uh, could develop more. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Um, we do have one more poll question that we wanted to share with you guys. So, uh, you know, if you can put it up, that'd be great. We like poll questions. <laughs> We're making sure everybody's awake. And by the way, guys, if you uh, want to ask a question directly, you can raise a hand as well. Um, or if you don't want to ask it directly, you can also put it in the Q&A section. All right, so what is the most important thing for you when you look for an employer? I'm glad I don't have to vote because there's a lot of good ones here, uh, yeah. Mira. <laughs> Interesting work life yeah. balance is very high up there too. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got career growth opportunities as the number one um, important thing. And then work life balance comes in second. Yep. Yeah, and if mm -hmm. I comment on that, I mean, I think that the, the career growth opportunities is one of the reasons I joined VMware. Um, you know, as I said, I, I came from from three startups where I was a CFO, and I had kind of re reached a point in my career that I wanted to come somewhere and, and grow more. Um, and uh, coming to VMware, uh, I knew when I came in that probably what I came in as would be different than what I would ultimately end up as in, in VMware because I wanted to grow grow more. Um, and that's what, for me, VMware presented and it presented a culture where that was possible. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I mean, I think I mentioned it uh, earlier. Um, for me, culture is, is really important. And the reason being is, you know, we spend most of our day at, at work. Um, and so the people that you work with- Not anymore. 
Well, most are a day on Zoom. <laughs> I have Zoom. I have Zoom fatigue right now. <laughs> You're still interacting, um, you know, and working together. And and culture is important in terms of how you work together, right? Uh, our executives have open door policy. Um, you know, people are always willing to help other people. Uh, everybody has a great attitude. Everybody wants to to do. Um, you know, VMware, we live by our epic values. If you don't know what our epic values are, it's execution, passion, integrity, customers, community, and that's at the heart of, of the company. And it really, it really comes into our day to day of how we work together and how we get things done um, and how we support each other. And so, um, you know, this is really, as you go look into um, companies, this is a personal, a personal decision on what is important to you when you're looking for for a job you know another thing that's not on here it may be pay you know that may be something that is important to you um, or the manager or the job content or the industry that you're going into um, you know one of the reasons I went into VMware is I wanted to change industries and that's actually some of the beauty of being in finance is that you're not limited into what industry that you go into um, and I really like that flexibility. And because semiconductor company had so much pressure on it, it was uh, it was career growth um, inhibiting as you know companies are getting bought out and spun and, and um, we changed. So VMware did allow us to have a lot of career growth opportunities. I think I've had in the last eight years, probably five jobs already. Um, and so that's really supported. And that's also at the basis of the culture. Yeah, thank, thank you, Jeff and Pacent. And I would probably add that I saw one of the um, top answers was about a challenging and dynamic um, environment, which I think VMware is a very dynamic and interesting place to be. So uh, if anybody wants to join us, raise your hand. I think that we have a, a question uh, around how will the COVID-19 crisis affect VMware financial team in Sofia? Will you continue to look for graduates or young talents for the internship programs. I can take this one. So um, we continue to have our internship uh, programs as they was planned before uh, the COVID-19 uh, crisis. And uh, we have two open positions for interns at finance because the question is for financial team, but we also have other interns in the finance organization with uh, data, data science, uh, business analysis. So um, you can uh, check the career, career power, uh, which have all the um, current NCG and uh, internship uh, job postings and uh, see what we have. So the short uh, answer is no, it won't affect our uh, programs for young talents. Thank you for this question. Um, do we have any more questions? We'll be happy to answer. Okay. Well, thank you. I think the, um, the questions that you guys pre-submitted and the ones that we uh, answered now um, were very good. Thank you for the interest and thank you for being with us here today. Um, we're very happy to have been part of this webinar. We hope you liked it. If you have any feedback for us, anything that you would have wanted to hear about or we could have done uh, better, please let us know. We'd, we'd like to make these um, regular so that we keep in touch and keep you posted on how the company is growing. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. Stay, stay, stay safe. safe. Stay safe. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.
I see Ivan. Ivan off his dawn. And Vladi. And Vladi. I'm removing them right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, yeah. Have you stopped recording? Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, I think I can also stop recording.